Hi, we're Sixpence None the Richer. I'm Lee Nash. This is Matt Slocum and Justin Carey. Uh, we're very excited to be here with you today. I think there's probably a lot of you from Brazil, and it's very nice especially to see you. Uh, we're going to start with a song. This is called Radio. That we drove in El Camino weather When that song started playing again We were singing it to the wind All the words they rang so true They were written for me and you We had an anthem, we had a creed We were all that we were you all enjoyed that that was called radio we have a record uh, called lost in transition that just came out yesterday and we're super excited about it and uh, we want to make sure you know that you can ask questions in the chat I'm not sure how you do that because I've never done one of these before but hopefully if you're watching us now you realize how to do that so um, someone is asking what our favorite record is from the new record mine is failure um, do you have a favorite yet either of you fellows I mean we're Whatever, not yet. No, I, I might, I might concur and echo your favorite. Yeah. I, I, but probably because of Greg Lee's playing "Beautiful Pedal Steel" on it. Yeah. That's my favorite song when we recorded it. Yeah, it's been my favorite from the get go. Yeah, I agree. So failure it seems as our favorite. Um, Matt, do you want to go about answering the next question about the album title? Sure, okay. sure. Um, yeah. So the uh, the the name of this 
record ended up being lost in transition. It had originally been uh, a working title of Strange Conversation, which we sort of had even announced was going to be the, the title of the record. And that was sort of based uh, on the fact that, that the songwriting process for this record was sort of Lee and I sort of bringing finished songs to each other and, and comparing. And um, I just sort of noticed a, a thread of, of uh, talking about some of the deeper issues of life uh, through the through the songs and not necessarily just direct conversation. And I thought that was a strange way of communicating, but, but very beautiful. Um, anyway, we moved beyond that and, and got into trying to release the record and that that was kind of when we fell into a bit of a purgatory waiting for release and that's where lost in transition came from yes and I, i'm seeing there's another question for me uh what is my favorite electric guitar and probably at this moment it is my 1960 fender relic custom shop stratocaster nice who is jay salinas Justin Carey? Oh, I think that's the person asking. Oh, hi, Jay. <laughs> okay. Which bands are you currently listening to? Um, I have been listening to that most recent Leonard Cohen record. I really love that. Um, Willie Nelson has something called Naked Willie that I've also been listening to. I, I go back to a lot of older artists um, when I'm listening to music in the car. I listen to a lot of... Uh, classic folk that have new music or I listen to their old music. So do you fellas have anything you want to add? Steady diet of Kathleen Edwards for me. She's this great Canadian kind of alt country rock singer and uh, I can't stop listening to her. I have a problem. <laughs> I have a problem with that. <laughs> it's probably not a bad problem. Mm, it's a good one. Uh, Darren Leeson, will you be touring later in the year? Yes, we are touring um, a little bit right now, and you can see our tour dates on sixpencehq.com um, for more information. So, what else do we have? David Vega wants to know Did living in Nashville have something to do with the country influence on the new album? I think that might be just that we decided to make this record very much about the songs, and then that. Um, just being a little a little bit more simple, and then we had this amazing um, pedal steel player, Greg Lease, who's a legend um, uh, in playing that instrument, come and play on the record, and I think that gave it mm -hmm. a little more of a country edge than people are probably used to, but um, man, that was such a special treat to have him um, play on the record. It was a big deal for us. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. um, and somebody's asking what it was like to work with Jim Scott uh, that was our producer on this record, and, and uh, if I had a choice, I would never work with any other producer ever again. He's very laid back, very kind, and just really talented at what he does. He's worked hard in his life, um, and it's made him really smart, and he knows what he's doing in the studio, so it was, yeah. it was a great experience. Um, there's more. Uh, Joshua Hake Matt. You mentioned in a piece you wrote that listening to your older recordings, some seem prophetic. Can you elaborate or give examples? Yeah, I, what I meant by that is, is uh, that uh, sometimes in songwriting, you, you'll, some of the songs that re we've recorded, I've maybe never quite known exactly what they've meant or, uh, you know, they seem to have sort of a, a thing about them that, that, you know, sounded good, but I wasn't quite sure what I was actually talking about. Um, and uh, it, it, it's interesting to me to go back and listen to older records and sort of see certain lyrical passages or um, uh, emotions that you were feeling, how they sort of, uh, you understand them sort of in hindsight, and uh, they've, they've actually sort of maybe predicted what, you were growing into or growing out of or, or whatnot. So that's that's a pretty uh, interesting thing about songwriting. It's it's to go back and sort of review what you've done before and sort of see uh, some stuff doesn't hold up at all and some's like, you know, that, that I, I, I didn't really understand at the time, but now, now I do, mm -hmm. so. I find that to be true as well. Um, all right, well, I guess we're, uh, going to do another song now. This is another new song from the new record. It's called Sooner Than Later. 
Um, this one is about the death of my father. My husband and I wrote this one together, and um, uh, that's what it's about, Sooner Than Later. I guess we did what we thought we had to But what we did wasn't right Prouder than we should have been Too many times we walked away And I always knew there'd be questions I don't know what you tried to do you were something special There was nothing simple about Edson. Oh, I love this question. Is Justin <laughs> as cute in person as he is on camera? Uh, man, that's, uh, <laughs> Thank you for that yeah. question, Matt. Uh, we miss no. you. Yeah. <laughs> that, that one answers itself. Nowhere near. But he does smell better than he looks like he would. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Thank you, Matt. Please send more questions. Uh, no. Okay. So, no maddish. Would like to know where did you have your best live show and favorite venue to play? Uh, mine was in Verona, um, Italy, mm. in that big square, that old, um, was it a public square or something? Beautiful old courtyard, and there were a ton of people there, and it just seemed like everybody was happy that night. It was really, really fun. So. Italy. Yeah, I know, really anywhere in Italy. <laughs> or Brazil, even though we haven't been yet, but we want to. So. Mm -hmm. How about you? Well, I, I don't know. I, I actually had one of my favorite shows of all time last night at uh, the gig at the Mercury Lounge, which is a pretty small place, but uh, I think that was maybe one of our best shows. Yeah. Uh, I really it was enjoyed a great it. Great crowd. It was yeah. fun. Yeah, that was cool. One of the sweetest crowds ever. Olivia Castillo wants to know where did you get your dress? It's pretty. Thank you. I got it at a 
thrift store in Austin called Bohemia. I feel like it's a little boxy. I might stand up in a minute. I'm getting a little freaked out. Uh, thank you for asking, though. Leon Van Steensel, what was the songwriting process like this time? What? I think he, I think he works at Flavo Fest. Oh, really? Uh, oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Since Lee wrote more and more through the years. Um, I, I guess it really wasn't any different. We just, um, you know, came together with our different song ideas rather than me just giving it up to Matt, because Matt is, is my truthfully my favorite songwriter ever. Well, he and Burt Bacharach, honestly. So I never really felt like I needed to write, or I, maybe I felt too intimidated to, but as I've gotten older, and he's, of course, been encouraging and very sweet about my writing over the years. So I'm glad I'm, I'm writing more, but um, I guess really that's, that's all it boils down to is I just started um, to write and bring things to the table versus just waiting for him to <laughs> write a whole record, which I'm completely happy to do, but um, thanks for asking. Tyler Barton wants to know, when you write a song, which comes first, the words or music? Your words and music from so many of your albums sound perfectly made for each other. Do you want to take that one? Yeah, I, I mean, my personal answer would be uh, the, the both, I guess. They, they tend to... Uh, they... I don't know. It, it it can be one or the other, I guess. Um, I would I I prefer it when the, the the words come first. I sometimes I think that makes a better song. Um, and I don't I don't know why that is, but I think it's just uh, you know I I usually sort of keep uh, a separate book of of uh, lyric ideas or or journals, keep those going, and then I sort of keep a separate uh, stash of little recordings of uh, guitar ideas or, or uh, melody ideas and then eventually sort of get around to sort of trying to mix and match, I guess. So that's that's the way it works best for me. Um, all right. Well, they are asking for another song now. Um, this is another new one. I hope you're okay with these new songs. This is called Safety Line. Thank you. 
right. That was Safety Line. Um, Joshua Hake, I hope I'm saying your name right, um, has a question. It says, the first time I saw you guys live, Model Engine and Drive opened the show. Who are some of your most favorite bands you've shared the stage with over the years? Uh, mine, I guess, Over the Rhine, for sure. I love those two bands that you mentioned. That was a kind of a really rough tour, but man, what a bunch of sweet guys. Um, Over the Rhine's great. We've gotten to play shows with, man, all kinds of people. We did, because we did festivals with Sting, and yeah. I don't know. What do you think? Anybody? Counting Crows was pretty awesome. That was cool. Little, that little Mike Sibilia guy last night was pretty great. Oh, yeah. We played a, our album release show last night, and uh, Mark Sibilia opened for us. Man, that guy is fantastic. He has some great songs. You should check him out. Um, what are some upcoming shows you're looking forward to? Uh, all of them, really, especially after last night. That show went really, really well. I think we've got a run it's in the Northeast, right? Yeah. But you can check out, what do you? What were you going to yeah, say? No, we're playing in Connecticut coming up. Like, and yeah. I've got a bunch of family there, so that's always fun. Yeah, yeah, that should be good. We've got a show in Nashville on uh, Sunday, the 12th, this Sunday, um, which, of course, we're excited because that's where we live, and so it'll be nice to play um, locally. So that's at 3rd and Lindsley. Um, how is the album different from your earlier work? Well, this one is definitely uh, more about the songs. There's a little bit less instrumentation, a little bit less um, orchestration, I guess is the, is the right word. Um, it's just simpler and really about the songs and my voice, which was, uh, it was a really enjoyable record to make. I think it's very, um, it shows some maturity, um, which is which is a nice thing. Um, that's that's all I can think of. It was a fun record to make. Uh, Bonnie Tang says, "When did you start singing?" I started singing, I guess, about 12, 11 or twelve. I really got interested in um, singing and finding my voice because I fell in love with Patsy Cline's voice, and um, she inspired me to want to find my own voice. And then Martin wants to know, what do you prefer more, gigs on a festival or playing in a club? I know for myself, I'd rather play in a club. Anybody? Oh, yeah, club. Club all the way. Yeah. You can actually feel the people, and, and it feels louder and heavier. Yeah. yeah. Festivals are fun, though. Um, Fernando Rocha, do you think it is easier to compose alone or together? Do you want to answer this one? Well, I... I kind of think it just depends on the personality. I, I I mean, I know for myself it's easier for me to work alone, and I think that works uh, well for a lot of people. Um, Nashville is sort of built on people working together. I think the co-writing thing is the name of the game there, and I I, uh, I think there's a lot of energy found in, in working together and writing together. I, I just I think it's easier for me personally, but I, I'm just a quieter person, so I think that works works for me. Um, who would you say have been your musical influences for the new record? I can't really. It's, I That's know. tough. It's like this record there's was really pretty organic the way it came together. There's the, the song ideas were pretty raw, and so it was really probably the musicians. We all made the sound in the studio at the time so i don't think there was like a target like band or touchstone artist it was more like what's going to make the song work right oh boy <laughs> my uh well steven wilson has a question does your husband have huge biceps the answer is yes he does um my husband i bet he does and then why does justin complete me <laughs> do you have an answer for that i've got a lot of male fans out there today that's yeah. odd that's you know but welcome but welcome Thank you, Stephen. I'm, I'm sweating show. now thinking about your biceps. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to play another song. Uh, this is called Melody of You. <laughs> Sing 
the scent of an unfound blue A simple two I only write variations to A drink that will knock me down on the floor A key that will unlock the door Where I hear a voice Sing familiar things Then beckons me weep No tin between a bow and a string, a tap and a glass. You pour me till the day has passed. This is my call, I belong to you. This is my call to sing the melody of you. This is my call, I can do nothing else. I can do Rick Starr, hi. Didn't I just see you the other night? I believe I did. I've seen you grow from a young, very shy girl singing Matt's songs back in the mid-90s to a very mature, confident woman. What things did you do to boost your confidence in yourself? Well, I failed a lot, but that's the absolute truth. I made a lot of mistakes, and I think that makes you grow up, and sometimes you maybe you don't have to make mistakes, but I did. And I think that that has um, played a big part of it. I also became a mother, and I'm, I'm a great mother. It, it, that made me stronger. Um, my son makes me stronger because uh, if, you, if you have kids, you know that you just you have to be strong when you have kids. So uh, thank you for that compliment. That's very kind of you. Um, somebody says, avid reader, and many of your songs were inspired by things you read. Two questions. This is probably for you, Matt. <laughs> Not that I don't read, but you read more. <laughs> uh, two questions. Are any of the songs on the new album inspired by things you read? And what books currently are you reading? Um, I don't... I, I actually, I, I don't think any of the songs on the record were directly inspired by a particular book or story that I can think of. But um, I think just uh, maybe... I, I think I've been reading a lot of... A lot of books, uh, I don't know, by like writers like Thomas Merton or Wendell Berry. Um, Richard Rohr is a new author that I've really connected with. And, and uh, a lot of these guys are just, uh, you know, more uh, sort of interested in the, in the mysterious side of faith or, or sort of just more focusing on the question than the answer. And I, I think that sort of just created a... Uh, Maybe maybe a bit more depth to the to the writing on the record. So so definitely indirect inspiration, but not not anything uh, sp specific, I guess. Uh, Jerson says, "Have you ever written for other artists?" And um, yes, I I uh, have a little bit. I have co-written some songs. I'm not a like Matt was saying earlier. I'm kind of the same way. I. Uh, 
don't really co-write a whole lot, but um, but I have before. I've done some some fun things. Um, uh, yeah, so that happens. And um, I would like to encourage you guys to keep asking questions. We are we are available. So anybody have a joke they want to tell or anything? <laughs> so maybe just a question, like you know how to you know cook yeah. a turkey. Yeah, maybe we could do that. Sure, we may not tell you the right way, but we can tell you. A way. A way. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Anybody? Any Brazilians have any sort of interest? Oh, in which way has internet changed uh, to promote new albums during your career? Well, it's been, <coughs> excuse me, it's a vast difference in the way that it was when we started in 92, 93. I mean, it's it's like night and day, so it takes a lot of uh, of self-education and certainly from learning from other artists and people that are more I'm sorry Matt sorry. more knowledgeable about um about the internet and stuff and of course we've we've gotten better it's not like you know I'm still calling it the world wide web or anything like that um I feel like I'm somewhat savvy but not nearly as much as someone who might be 10 years younger so anyway good question Valent Valentina uh, Matt, she loves your cello work. Will you be playing cello live? Uh, well, thank you, and uh, yes, I, I I hope to. Currently, we've we've been touring sort of as a trio with vocals, so there hasn't been much room for it. But uh, would would definitely love to incorporate it in the future. Martin, again, now that you have a family, how do you divide your time between your career and your family? Um, that is not, at least for me, um, presented too much of a problem. It always seems like when we're busy, the timing has been really good. You know, it's been s summer, obviously, or it has been here. And uh, we, um, well, I guess it's summer everywhere. <laughs> hey, there's four seasons. They all happen at the same time. That's not true. Actually, yeah, I think no, in the they southern don't. hemisphere. Maybe yeah, they don't. okay. So that's a I'm so I'm so stressed out. Um, anyway, <laughs> it seems to work out timing wise. I've never really had to leave my son for long periods of time, and I don't know how how I really don't know yet. We haven't been all that busy, but um, you know, we're pretty attached to our kids, so pr probably won't try to leave them for too long. We're gonna play another song now. Uh, this is another new one. Thank you again very much for. God, I did it again. So for if it's okay, it's not your fault for being with us right now, um, and for all your sweet questions. This is called "When You Call Me."
Thank you guys very much for listening to us. I don't know. Are there more questions? It says, if someone had never heard of Sixpence and I could play them only one song, what song should I play them? Uh, I guess we probably all have a different answer. That's a, that's a really good question. Um, I, I think Melody of You. I have a lot of favorites, though. Do you have one? I, I was actually going to say Melody of You. Um, as, as a good example of just, you know, themes and lyr- lyrical content and oh. sound, I guess. But Thanks for the question. That was, yeah. that was good. What do your kids think of your success? Any stories? Um, I, I'm, Henry is eight. My son is um, getting older, and the older he gets, I guess he, acknowledge, he acknowledges that I'm a singer a little bit more because we never really talked about it too much until now. It's, it's more obvious to him because, you know, he knows where I go when I go work. And, um, yeah, he thinks it's cool. In the grocery store sometimes, if you know, in the past, I would kind of poke him and say, that's me singing. And he'd kind of look at me like, I don't care. Anybody's mom, you know, my friend John's mom might be next, you know. <laughs> he didn't know. But he's starting to understand it better now. How about your girl? Well, Olive. Yeah, I have a four-year-old, and and she's actually uh, become obsessed with this uh, with this new album. And apparently she knows all the words to My Dear Machine, or she, at least she can sing them all <laughs> to where they sound like the words. So, so yeah, she's pretty uh, she's pretty happy with Daddy right now, but I'm, I'm sure that'll wear off, you know, soon enough. <laughs> yeah, wait till she gets to the next Sweet. song. And she's yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, somebody is asking if you could work with any other artists. Who would you like to work with? Um, oh, Kathleen Edwards. Um, I think that that has been well established. Oh, okay. Have I, have I mentioned her yet? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Kathleen. I hope you're out there. I hope this isn't creepy. <laughs> uh, my top choice would be Willie Nelson or uh, maybe Mana. I'm pretty into the band <laughs> Mana. How about you? <laughs> There's lots. I yeah. I'd, I've been really obsessed with this British band called Elbow for a long time, um, and uh, to get to do just a tour with them or a show with them uh, or uh, collaborate on a record would be pretty fantastic. Yeah. Cool. Um, how was it um, different releasing this album independently? The record came out. <laughs> That's been the main <laughs> difference. Um, Progress. <laughs> oh, I, we didn't have a, a, a number six. That was the last song we planned for. It was. But, um, yeah. So should we talk or play something out? I'll just call it and we'll play it. Scary. Uh, Real scary for me. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, you want to do with a... Sure. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Well, thank you so very much for listening to us. Uh, we love you very much and hope to get to see you in person. Thank you, live stream, for having us. This is really, really cool. Which one was it? Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're whispering up here. We're going to play a little for you, and then I guess we'll walk out and do it again. So sorry. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye. me out of the bearded barley nightly beside the green green grass swing 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 the spinning step you wear those shoes and I will wear that dress oh kiss me beneath the milky twilight lead me out Sparkly
again very much. <laughs>